thank you so much for inviting uh, me to talk this afternoon on Pacific Andes' approach to food safety in the supply chain. Um, I think the first question is, why would you focus on the seafood industry? Because we are a global player in the seafood industry. Um, and I think uh, it, the, the reason is because the supply chain for the seafood industry is particularly complex, and it's most, most complex at the beginning of that supply chain. So for example, seafood enters the supply chain, either it is farmed or it's uh, wild caught, it can be processed at sea, processed on the land, it can be frozen at sea or not frozen at sea. There's a whole range of ways that seafood comes into the supply chain. And every one of those different ways has its own implications for food safety. So um, Pacific Andes is one of the few truly global players in the seafood industry. So throughout the decades that we've been operating, uh, we've certainly come to be very clear about the fact that, um, that food safety is a fundamental and a top priority for us. So firstly, a little bit about uh, Pacific Andes. You can see from left to right there that we're involved in the whole of the supply chain of seafood, um, the whole of the value chain. Uh, we harvest fish, we source fish, we manage um, ocean logistics. Um, we are involved in the transportation of fish at sea. Uh, we process fish, we, we do fish food safety testing, and we distribute frozen fish uh, and um, more recently we've become uh, one of the world's leading uh, producers of fish meal and fish oil, uh, which you probably know is a main food in the aquaculture industry. A lot of our business is uh, business to business. Uh, a lot of it is in wholesale. Um, we do have some retail brands, um, mainly in the US traditionally, but we've got some brands now in China, and we do sell some retail product uh, across Africa. Um, I'm not going to say much about this except to say that this shows uh, just how global uh, the, the seafood is that we do source all of these species from all of these countries right around the world um, and uh, you know, that's, a, that's a very complex uh, uh, piece of supply chain to manage. Um, but um, you know, we've, got a, we've got a very, I guess, simple formula for looking at food safety in our supply chain. Um, we have thousands of customers. Uh, around the world as a result of our operations. Uh, lots of different requirements, but if we look at these uh, four simple areas, I think it's the best way for us to consider our approach to food safety. So firstly, I'm going to talk about origin or provenance. Um, this is particularly important in the seafood industry because we need to know where the seafood comes from. Uh, we need to know how it's caught, vessels and so on. I'm going to talk about traceability because it's a very important issue for consumers and others about how we trace it back uh, to its origins. Um, talk about quality, of course, and that's about uh, the certification systems and what we do to ensure quality uh, throughout our chain of custody. And of course, labeling, uh, which is all about us being able to provide all that information to our customers and consumers so that they can make the right choices uh, of what they uh, want to purchase. Um, so. Talking first about origin, because this is a very important topic for us. Origin is not only important in the seafood industry in terms of food safety, but it's very important to control against um, illegal or unregulated um, or unreported fish entering the supply chain. Um, and let me explain what that is for those who may not be familiar. Um, the way the fish industry works, well firstly let me say that the fishing industry I think is one of the most highly regulated industries that I've ever come across, which was a surprise to me. Um, but the way the fishing industry operates globally is that either countries or regional fish management organisations, they set total allowable catches for either countries or, or oceans. Um, and they licence um, fishing companies to catch fish up to quota levels within those areas. Um, they're not a, it's not only about how much fish can be caught, but it's also about when the fishing can take place, how the fishing takes place, um, all the reporting that has to be done, there's complex reporting, observers, there's a whole range of very tight restrictions on how that happens. But of course, a key reason for that is to make sure that we have sustainable oceans, and we all know that. Um, but what that means, you know, why is that important to a conversation about food safety? It's important because if, if you are looking at illegally caught fish, then you don't know anything about it. 
You don't know where it's come from. You don't know how it's been caught. And so it's a problem. So guarding against um, uh, illegal and unreported um, and unregulated fish entering the supply chain is a, is a very big priority for us. So what do we do? We, we firstly screen our suppliers. Um, there are a number of publicly available databases of companies um, and fishing vessels that have been involved in illegal fishing. Um, so we obviously check any potential suppliers against those databases. If we see that somebody has been in, involved in illegal fishing, then we obviously don't do business with them. Um, we, we, then we um, uh, require any potential supplier to sign a supplier confirmation agreement, which includes a supplier code of conduct to make sure that our, our requirements are well known. And then we do a lot of document checking. Um, there's a lot of documentation that goes with the fishing industry. So we look at uh, documents that make sure that, uh, that ensure that the person who's our prospective supplier had the authority to catch the fish um, uh, within a quota level. Uh, we look at the, the catch certificates, health certificates, um, and uh, certificates of origin. So we, we, we make sure that we get all that. So when we get all that, then we feel confident about the supplier we're doing business with, and we feel confident we're not letting fish into our system um, that, we, uh, that we don't know its origin. So that's a very important part. Then moving to traceability. Um, once we have all these certificates and all of this uh, documentation, um, then we know uh, the vessel license, uh, we know where the fish was caught, how the fish was caught, we know the port of landing, we know all these things. So what we do within our organisation is we allocate a batch number to each batch of raw material that has attached to it all of that information. And we have an electronic computer-based system called Enterprise Resource Planning, or ERP, that we record that in. And that is an organisation-wide network of, of information that makes sure that that information is sound and is associated with the batch number. Um, we also have a, a system called a Marrell system, which records the batch number at each point as we process fish and as it moves through our chain of, um, of control. Um, and that might be based on manual recording or RFID tags, but that has all the traceability information on it. Um, so that means that we, at all times we can, we, can, we can know where the fish has been caught, we know the vessel, and we know its history. Um, we also, uh, to take that one step further, in 2005, we pioneered a system uh, we call LOCAD, um, which, um, uh, which takes it one step further. Not only do we know vessel and where the fish was caught, but we know the day on which it was, it was caught, which, um, which for the seafood industry is taking it really to the highest level that it's been taken. Um, and that's all done via um, recording information on the vessel, colour coding, bar, uh, bar coding, that gets put on the transshipment packages and follows the product as it moves through our system. Uh, when, so when our customers are looking for that kind of accuracy of traceability, uh, we are able to deliver it. Um, quality, um, sorry, on quality, um, adopting international management standards and, um, and certification standards is really at the core of, of, uh, of our quality processes. Um, our largest fish processing uh, plant is in China, and it was one of the first in Asia uh, to, to achieve certification under ISO 22000. Um, for um, international food management systems, um, and also, of course, 9001 uh, for quality certification. Um, globally, uh, our processing plants are certified to the Global Food Safety Initiative benchmark standards, um, such as the British Retailer Consortium, or BRC standard, um, and we've achieved the highest A grade in that BRC standard. Um, auditing plays a very big part in all of this. Um, uh, we are audited by our uh, certification bodies, obviously, um, but there are a lot of customer audits. There is a large number of customer audits on all of our operations. For example, in China alone, um, in 2012 and 2013, we had 46 customer audits on our uh, facility in Qingdao. So, uh, so customer audits are a, are a big part of this. In terms of our suppliers, um, we communicate our specifications and our requirements to our suppliers. We do risk assessments of all of our suppliers and we, and we audit any high risks that we find as a result of those, those risk assessments. Um, and in China, 
again, as an example, um, around 90% of our suppliers are subject to audit. So, um, so certification and, audit and auditing are big parts of our, of our, um, of our quality system. Um, because uh, we're able to have such a high level of traceability within our, within our network and our chain of custody, um, we are in a very good place if we have to do a product recall. Um, we, um, we, we can, within four hours of getting any information about any of our products, we're able to know exactly who has those products and if we needed to, we would be able to give notification to those people. So we have a good level of traceability there. And um, to ensure that that process is effective, we annually carry out um, simulated um, recall uh, procedures every year. Um, and the good news is that we haven't to, had to actually use them up until now but we have the processes ready to go. Um, so it goes without saying that in terms of our product within our control, that we have um, a comprehensive testing regimen. So every batch of raw material, finished product undergoes safety and um, quality uh, testing, physical, chemical, micro testing, both internal and external. I think that, that goes without saying. We, um, in terms of external testing, um, in 2003, we set up an organisation called Sino Analytica. This it was done in partnership with the UK Central Science Laboratory. Um, it was um, it's a world class um, independent testing laboratory uh, in China. Um, it's the only UK accreditation services certified uh, facility in China. Um, it has achieved the 17,025 accreditation um, and. Um, uh, in accordance with uh, international man management uh, practices and it's run independent to us. We do some testing there, but the large part of the testing this organisation does uh, is not our testing, but generally in industry. Um, and we're about to take that to the next stage and roll out um, across the PRC uh, an educational process to try and lift um, the standard of education um, um, around laboratory technicians uh, across uh, So uh, then labelling um, is pretty straightforward because we're already in a position where we have batch numbers and barcoding. So with all those processes in place, we can make sure that as our product changes hands, that we have our barcoding and our batch numbers in place and we're able to give assurance that as that product moves through the supply chain, that all of the history and all the information about that product um, can be included on, and retained on labelling. And I'll come back, most of those labels that you see there are um, wholesale labels, but I'll come back to consumer label, labeling uh, towards the end. Um, you probably can't see this very clearly, but this is just an indication of how our ERP system catches those batch numbers with all of the historical and detailed information with it as the product moves through the system. Um, I just wanted to talk now about a couple of our facilities in particular. Um, the largest one is the one that I've already mentioned, which is um, was set up in 2009, which is a state of the art processing facility um, in, in Qingdao. Um, and that has the capacity to process um, 60,000 tonnes of fish fillets a year. It's a lot of fish. Um, and that's equi it's equipped with computerised temperature control, wireless inventory management system, so state of the art. It also, of course, has on-site, a very large on-site R&D facility. It does all of the micro-testing physical testing, chemical testing of the raw materials that come in and all of the, pro all the, um, the products that are processed. So that's our Qingdao um, facility. We, we also have um, uh, investments in Europe. Um, we have plants in Germany and France. Um, and those plants um, have implemented um, integrated systems as well for quality and for safety. The BRC system that I mentioned earlier and featured standards uh, system um, which, is, uh, which has been attained at the highest level. So we, we take this through each of our facilities uh, throughout the world, we try to be consistent with that. Um, this is uh, returning to the labelling question and about transparency. Um, there were a few comments as I was chatting to people uh, before I started that certainly the consumer expectations of seafood in terms of knowing where it's come from and, f and f needing to feel secure about the path that it's taken before it gets to the consumer, those, those, those anxieties are quite high. Um, and as a result, in a lot of 
parts of the world, in particular in Europe, um, labeling requirements uh, are often very, very steep. So you see on the left-hand side there a, a, a consumer product label that has you know, the common name of the fish, the Latin name of the fish, the FAO catch area, the catching area, the um, uh, catching period, um, the, the vessel, the port of landing. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So that is the level of transparency that people are now expecting. Um, so all of these processes we have about understanding the origin and the traceability are absolutely necessary and are, are really in demand by the consumers and are going to be what is being required in labeling going forward. On the right-hand side, um, as of a couple of years ago, uh, we've um, started printing tracking codes on consumer packaging. So we have a QR code there um, so that when the consumer buys the package, the consumer can step, scan the QR code, go into the retailer's database and can find out everything about the species and all of the historical information that goes with that particular fish. So that, we would say, is um, certainly some a direction that, uh, that the packaging for seafood is going for the future. Um, so, um, as I said, to conclude, uh, consumers have a very high expectation of the seafood industry. It's inc incredibly important to us that we have these uh, food safety and quality features built into our processes. And um, because we're global operators, there aren't too many global operators in the fishing industry, we feel we've got a bit of a responsibility uh, to take some leadership here. So these are some of the ways that I've uh, run through very quickly this afternoon of how we have uh, taken some leadership in product safety. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Walsh.